Hey party people! Welcome back to my channel where I translate academic work on language and social theory into regular human talk or regular human language without dumbing anything down, of course. So today's new video, we are covering an article by Ilana Gershon called I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. Typing the neoliberal self into a branded existence. Okay, first and foremost, we gotta address the most important part of this article. Is this title quoting that Kanye West and Jay-Z song? The answer, yes. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. So, as you know, I do uh, language stuff on this channel. And, but you might be thinking, but Mike, this, is ar this article isn't even from a language journal. True, but this is all about semiotics and language. Signs, in other words. Um, Written without adopting too much of the jargon, uh, which means that I like it. Um, I mean, I did have a phase where I couldn't get enough of words like metapragmatic regimentation or um, access of differentiation, etc., etc. But uh, not anymore. I'm kind of over it. Um, but she does use the phrase semiotic techniques or the word technique. Um, about 15 times in this article, and that's kind of a complex uh, phrase, complex word. And I think it'll help you tons if I give you a little tiny crash course on how semiotics works, or how to think about semiotics, or the process of recognizing signs. Signs and meaning. So let's talk about it. Okay, the word semiotics is difficult. But we gotta think of this one sentence. Signs give rise to more signs. So what does that mean? Crash course, semiotics 101. Signs give rise to signs. So I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you stumble upon a fire. You might think uh, heat, danger, smoke. These are all signs we interpret. Um, but to get to those thoughts, to get to those sets of meanings, we had to go through other sets of signs. For example, we might have used the word or used the letters in the word fire. So each letter, F-I-R-E, is a sign, right? And those letters, those signs, are attached to sounds. More signs, more meaning. Uh, together, put them together, we create the word fire. We create the sound fire. So, semiotics means we are talking about wide packages of signs that come together or are assembled to make meaning. And those meanings are always in the process of creating more meanings. In other words, signs give rise to signs. Yet, we don't think of all that stuff, all of that, at all times, right? Most of it's backgrounded. So we aren't thinking of the letters F-I-R-E in the moment that we're perceiving, you know, the danger or the light or smelling the smoke of fire. Um, maybe we're just thinking of danger or like, let's get out of here. So this article, is about creating these packages of signs that signal a type of person, a type of neoliberal subject, or something like an entrepreneur who is imagined to treat oneself as a business, um, constantly managing uh, one's own assets, always enhancing one's own assets, um, and maximally responsible for their own wins and also their own failures, right? So this is a, this is a hyper-individualistic way of thinking about uh, the person. Um, and specifically, this article is about using branding techniques uh, as human beings to purposefully background some information and foreground other information so that you perceive this package of signs as the ideal imagined neoliberal subject or the entrepreneur. Does that make sense? Hope it does. Moving on. So branding is a semiotic process or 
technique to assemble a coherent package of signs. Um, Gershon, Gershon identifies a dilemma. Um, how are we supposed to represent ourselves as flexible workers, as workers that can fill in any kind of position, um, while also not sounding like a total mess on paper? For example, on a resume or on websites like LinkedIn. Um, if you got vastly different career moments in life where you do like super different kinds of stuff, um, you might seem all over the place. Uh, but this is likely how, or this is the way that the economy works for a lot of individuals nowadays. But how do you make it seem like you have a coherent, consistent, authentic self that employers can think, um, oh, I know this person will fit in here, or I can predict how this person will behave in such and such scenario. So again, um, we're talking about self-branding. It's a game of backgrounding and foregrounding specific information, specific signs. So here we get into the discussion of authenticity. Meaning, can employers recognize a stable, coherent, authentic person within these sometimes twisting and turning career paths? Um, how do we bring out particular qualities we want to be seen? And can we do this on purpose? Um, how do we get people to perceive these qualities as remaining consistent across any context? Um, how do we make these qualities appear true without necessarily having to be attached to a particular context or what Gershon calls a context-free personality? Well, again, this is a branding technique, a semiotic te technique. So remember, signs give rise to signs. That messy career path can potentially give off a package of signs that makes you look like a hot mess. Um, so how might we foreground some stuff to create a coherent person? Um, that's the question. So notice when signs are assembled a certain way, um, we can background stuff so that those signs don't necessarily take off or give rise to more signs in a way that we don't want. Um, at the same time, we can foreground stuff um, or sets of signs that we want for those signs to give rise to more signs. So the good stuff, right? Now, we see this from the branding expert uh, talking about, uh, this is that little, that, um, little excerpt. Um, we see a branding expert talking about helping curate a, pr a personal brand with ex-offenders, where selling drugs turns into customer service. Because selling drugs comes with its own potential package of signs. Maybe, um, maybe stuff like violence or dishonesty or um, uh, a potential thief, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we don't want those signs to take off. So instead, the branding expert foregrounds the quality of work uh, and selling drugs uh, turns into something like customer service or the ability to project trustworthiness or the ability to read the desire of clients. Now, these are qualities that are imagined to exist context-free. These qualities can move from one context to the next. Um, these qualities are then imagined to make up the core of the person applying for a job. So this is where it gets quite interesting because people are expected to be unique. Um, but that uniqueness must be presented in a very specific way. Um, so this type of uniqueness has, in a sense, become standardized. Uh, so there are techniques that are widely used to brand oneself as unique, but also with a set of qualities that everyone knows um, will signal a type of person that is predictable in certain situations. 
Um, and that's a finding from Gershon's ethnographic field work where she went to like a million branding workshops and interviewed like a million people. Uh, so over time, branding techniques uh, have emerged that everyone tends to follow. Um, and of course, we got to mention that these branding workshops are not just showing people how to brand themselves. They are also contributing to the standardization of the branding process itself. So now branding seems to be a very clear performative genre. Um, but really, it's really it's cl it's a, it's clearly a recognizable genre because of this interplay between what is imagined to work in combination with these workshops, but also the way people are encouraged to imagine themselves as businesses, um, but also because of the contemporary uh, labor demands, um, which. Which, which needs this so-called flexible labor force that can adjust on demand. So there's this entire constellation of factors at play here, coming together in a way that sets the conditions for something like the notion of personal branding to become a necessity or to become even possible in the first place. So you gotta be flexible, but you cannot be a hot mess. So this article, um, is indeed focused on this built-in tension in the neoliberal condition and this idea of the entrepreneurial self. Now, ironically, I got a couple tips on branding this YouTube channel um, from this article. So I had, uh, I had originally created this, this channel for my students, um, but it's, over time it's developed into something uh, a bit more and has necessitated me being a bit more conscious about the semiotic techniques uh, I use to create a kind of stability across the videos. So like I had my friend draw that stupid uh, little icon of me um, because I was just, I don't know, I was, I was trying to be silly, whatever. But without knowing it, I was actually uh, creating a sign of continuity across my videos. I've also changed the way I do other things. Like for example, I don't tell people to visit my Facebook at the end of these videos anymore because it doesn't represent me as an academic. So I guess that would be something like uh, being off brand. So you see, I'm attempting to assemble the signs in a certain way to control the perception of me as an academic. Okay. So that's it for today. Um, hit the like button, subscribe to me on Twitter, or find me on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Um, you can also find me on academia.edu for uh, future publications. I'm Mike. I hope you liked this video. It was very fun to make. I will see you around for your next lecture.